Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Construction Show. We have another product promo. This time, we have Corey Connolly, Senior Product Manager, back with Skyjack. Today, we are going to be going into telehandlers. So, Corey, welcome back to The Construction Show. Uh, great to have you for this episode, and let's jump into it. When did Skyjack get involved with telehandlers? Thank you again for having me back on the show. And yeah, to give a bit of, I'll give a bit of a history lesson on Skyjack's introduction into the telehandler market in North America and kind of where we're at right now. So going back uh, in history, uh, to look at how Skyjack got into the telehandler market, we have to go back to 2007 and 2008, and that's when we acquired two different uh, telehandler product lines. The first was in 2007, we acquired the Zoom Boom line from Carelift, and then in 2008, we acquired the VR line from Volvo. In 2015, we had already gone through one emission change requirement in North America. Then we were facing another change going from tier four interim to tier four final. At that time, we revisited our, our telehandler line. We looked at the what we had in our current offering, and then we decided to launch a whole new range of telehandlers. So not just making an engine change, but a whole refreshed new line. So that range in turn was uh, has seen some further upgrades since then, but that really, we kicked it off back in 2015. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, it sounds like you're really kind of going hard into hard into the telehandlers then too. What, what with the Skyjack range that you're you're building out, uh, what is special about uh, about that for the industry? So when you look at our current range of TH telehandlers, we've got six models now that range from, when you look at the capacities, range from 5,500 pound lifting capacity up to 12,000 pounds lifting capacity. Uh, then you also have to look at the, the lifting height. So ranging from just over 19 feet up to 56 feet of lifting height. Mm. One of the things when we look at that range was we looked at some of the, the features and benefits of our, the previous generation of machines that we had acquired. Uh, also we, we, we looked at what the competitive landscape looked at that time and looked at what we wanted to incorporate into our new design at the time. So obviously, like we do on all of our, our products, huge focus on not only performance, but also on the reliability and serviceability of the products. But then getting back on the performance side of things, what we really wanted to do is optimize those reach diagrams for our machines. So again, looking at the capacities, looking at the, the lifting heights. So when you look at the, the reach diagrams and the load charts of our machines, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we tried to do was have uh, class leading uh reach diagram. So what looking at the, or sorry, load chart. So looking at the different zones within the load chart, we really want to optimize those as best as we could to put our machines at a competitive advantage. And then one other thing is we still do have, we retained one, one of the zoom boom models, our ZB 2044, okay. which is our highest capacity machine. So it has a maximum lifting capacity of 20,000 pounds, uh, with a max lifting height of 44 feet, 10 inches. Yeah, I'm very familiar with the Zoom Boom as uh, I, I use I use them around the job site in a in a, in earlier days of my career in in mining equipment. So they're uh, they're very well known as well. The I think a lot of a lot of our viewers they will have seen Skyjack machines like on site. If if you drive by most sites, you're going to see a Skyjack machine. The what what new highlights are are good to mention in in these machines. So like I was mentioning before, when we came up with the initial design of our current generation of telehand, there's a big focus on the serviceability and reliability. Yep. We've gone through some more updates to help improve those so some of the, the reliability pain points that some of our customers had with our machines. So we looked at ways that we could uh, make some improvements to our product again. So you'll notice uh, over the last three to four years, we've gone through a few updates. Uh, one of them was updating the... Uh, engine covers moving from fiberglass to steel. Uh, one of the other things we did was we, we relocated the engine ECU. We also added a high pressure filter to the hydraulic system. And then we've also gone through a couple changes to the, the, the main boom pivot bearings. So we initially introduced the greaseless bearings and then we also made some improvements about a year and a half ago to both the process and installation of them as well as adding uh, gr greaseless bearings that have uh, increased load rating on them as well. Again, not only go 
focusing on performance of these machines, but then also always looking at ways to improve the the reliability and serviceability of those machines. And some of those most recent updates are addressing more the the service and reliability side. Okay, good. The I also noticed you're using 74 horsepower engines. The that seems a little bit different as well. So maybe a little background on on that too, and if that's part of like the emission regulation front as well. So yeah, looking back at when we were launching the our current line of telehandlers, uh, like I was mentioning before, we were kind of facing a, a change in engine emission requirements then in North America. So what that meant was essentially any engine over 74 horsepower, so 75 horsepower and above, was going to require some form of active after treatment. Mm. So we looked at whether or not there was an opportunity to avoid that on some of our machines. And that's why when you see on some of our machines the, the, the smart torque word mark, what that's referring to is what we did to uh, optimize our machines by utilizing a smaller sub 75 horsepower engine by combining that with the uh, different gear ratios on our axles as well as our, our hydraulic system so that on our six eights and tens we can utilize that smaller horsepower engine really the only trade-off is on the engine speed side so you're going from maybe 19 miles per hour top speed down to 17 miles per hour but when it comes to being able to navigate navigate a typical job site, you're not going to see any losses on the tractive effort side of things. So the benefit there is you're avoiding any of that active after treatment system, whether that be a DPF, having to uh, deal with any assorted downtime maintenance required tied to that. Um, so you're saving time and cost with with by avoiding those. Obviously, in some applications, you may still require that additional power. So we do still have available 107 horsepower engines as, as an option on our 10K telehandlers. Okay, that's some good information on the engines and the different powers and like going up if you needed. Um, is there other is there other areas around this that you can kind of let the audience know that have been potentially updated as well on the on the telehandlers? Yeah, so one of the other things that we focused on updating on the our current TH line was the the cab, specifically looking at the glass used in our cab. So we offer a couple of different options. You can get an open cab or you can get a closed cab. And then sometimes some of our customers, they may want to have the option to convert an open cab to a closed cab. So you see one of the word marks we use when promoting our telehandle line is flex cab. Mm -hmm. So what that's referring to is using just standard flat glass that can be easily sourced and replaced. Whereas on a previous generation of machines, our cabs were using customized curved glass, which was not easy to source if you wanted to convert a cab or you need to replace or repair a damaged cab. So that's when we went to the the new cab design, that was one of the things we wanted to implement was having to avoid any sort of custom glass. So you got the flat glass design that can easily be sourced and or added and replaced. And then when you look at our most recent telehandler model that we launched, our small compact 519 telehandler, uh, very similar cab that we use on our larger telehandlers. Uh, and that was, again, a focal point on that machine, again, using the same type of design ethos uh the only difference is the slightly lower uh height as far as the cab height goes mm -hmm. but otherwise the cab is almost identical on the 519 which seems and sounds pretty straightforward but that was one of the pain points that was identified in the market at the time was a lot of our competitors were using smaller cabs for their compact telehandlers which were was not always easy for an operator to get in and out of the cab they have to adjust the steering column that was one of the things we wanted to avoid with our 519 actually that's a that's a good uh, lead in to that 519. So the it, that one's a newer machine as well. Like that's a newer one that you developed, the 519. Yeah, that's our most recent edition that we launched, our 519. It's compact tile handler, definitely a bit different than our existing or the rest of our TH range. Um, when, when you look at the design features on that machine, uh, just visually, you can tell it's a bit different. Uh, it's used in a lot of the same applications that the other telehandlers are used in, but it's also used in a lot of other applications that the larger machines aren't always used in. Sometimes they can be used in non-construction applications. They may be used in more of an urban setting, parking garages, things like that. Um, again, where the space is a bit more confined and you're maybe not always using the machine to pick and place loads. They could be used for moving material around, uh, 
and sometimes they're they're kind of viewed as a as a tool carrier. So when you look at the oh. attachments that can be used on the machines, yes, they have a lot of the same attachments, forks, carriages, buckets that the larger telehandlers have, but they also have other uh, attachments like it, on our machine, uh, we've got a skid steer adapter plate so that the machine can use uh, different uh, t- types of attachments that would be commonly used on a skid steer. Yep. You could have brushes, you could have an auger. So again, using that machine and some more more applications than you would see a typical telehandler use. So again, looking at the design, the pivot point on the boom, a bit different than you would see in a typical North American construction telehandler. Uh, it's a lower pivot. Again, you're driving, using the machine a bit more with the boom down, you want better visibility. Visibility. One of the other things that we have on our 519, you'll see a feature flex drive that we like to promote. What that's referring to is the ability to dial down the drive speed while keeping function speeds the same. So if you're using it again in a tighter space, you want to be able to creep the from a drive standpoint, but you still want to have that same type of lifting functionality. Again, it's dialing back that drive speed, but not impeding the, the lifting and extending function. And then one of the most recent updates and additions that we had to our 519, I guess going back to talk about the different options and attachments, we've got the attachments, but we also have a variety of tire options as well. And one of the newest additions to the 519 is the uh, availability of a turf tire option. So again, those machines being used on some non-construction sites, being used on grass, sensitive more sensitive areas where maybe you don't want to be tearing up the ground with an Mm -hmm. aggressive tire tread, the, the turf tire is a good alternative there. Okay, and then on the range, like uh, in in wrapping up the, you've got you've got like the lifting hook. You already mentioned like some of the different attachments that you might see on a skid steer. So maybe just to kind of like uh, go into that, the the attachments that are available across the line, like across your lineup for the telehandlers as well, would be a good just a good thing to let the viewers know about as well. Yeah, so we've got a variety of different fork options, different carriage options. Uh, we've got side tilting carriages. We've got different uh, bucket options. We've also got truss booms available. And then, like you were mentioning, we have the, the hook. You'll see the ready hook feature that we talk about. Mm-hmm. So what that's referring to is a yoke-mounted lifting hook, which is standard on all of our TH telehandlers. Again, the 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 the, the benefit of that feature is that it allows safe underslinging of loads and avoids what has sometimes the the way the machines have been used when loads are being underslung off of the the forks so again providing more versatility and uh better safe practice with the machines yeah i think that's been i I mean we've done like a pretty a a pretty deep dive even though this is a shorter episode today but um we've kind of covered it like you said the evolution from You've got like the TH series and the Zoom Boom Legacy to now all the all the innovations around the Smart Torque Flex Cab Ready Hook. The, it, I mean that's I guess why you see them around so many job sites and with all the new all the new features and even be able to kind of customize what you want. It's they're great for so many they're great for so many applications. Um, Corey, thank you again for joining. Uh, we had you on earlier, of course, to talk about the. Uh, the booms and now it's been great to cover the the telehandlers and the again for everybody watching the construction show and this is a product promo we will link to all the the different uh, basically the different models that we featured in today's episode thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on the construction show 